Hey guys, I'm back, and so is this box. And this is make it or break it time, because communication from Jason, the funder of this box, says that if he's disappointed with this one, he's probably gonna cancel it, and, and they are done. So, a lot is riding on what's in this box, and it's a pretty big box, as Smoky Mountain Knifeworks box goes. So I say let's get right into it with no further ado. What is ado? What is ado? Like, I, that's probably a French word. I think we need to look up ado. I'm trying to be really careful not to cut through anything that may be in the box. Um, but we have March for 2021, and that is our first box to arrive. Starting our box cycle. So I'm excited. I'm really excited too to see how this one stacks up because this is going to be the make it or break it box for this subscription on this channel. Now we have loved this box. We have um, been disappointed in this box. So everything out of the box, we've got a Smoky Mountain sticker. Um, we've got, I, I looked at this for a minute and I said, what, we really? And then I saw the Full Tang Clan. <laughs> I was like, wow. All right, so now we know about their musical taste, but okay, it's the Full Tang Clan. Um, that's cute. So if you're not familiar with the way this subscription works, there are three levels to this box. The GI, the Officer's Club, and then the General's Box, or sometimes called the Five Star Box. And like many other subscriptions, each one builds off of what comes before it. Um, now, when this box, we first started looking at it, there was a lot, honestly, there was a lot more in it than what's coming now. Um, you know, and I understand the disappointment that Jason is feeling because he's the one that pays for this box. So this is not mine. Jason pays for the box. It comes to me. I review it. I send it to Jason. Um, and so, you know, for him to be upset, uh, he's the one shelling out the money. So for him to be disappointed, totally understandable. And, and I'm disappointed lately opening them up and, and reviewing them with you guys because they're just kind of like, eh, what's going on? Um, so just kind of looking at what's, what's here, I'm kind of feeling like I don't know if this is going to be enough to keep his interest. But there are, there are plans afoot should this box get canceled, so don't worry. But anyway, we've got a total of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So I, is this a free thing in here? Oh, you know what this is? This is a valet tray. Um, that is that is kind of cool. This is a, a, a leather valet tray that is gonna give you cancer just like everything else does in the state of California but it looks like this is a free item. So that's nice. Um, and I'm sniffing it and you know, I don't, doesn't really have a real leather smell, but if you're, if you don't have one, I have a, a really nice one by Popov Leather in the other room, um, in the window by the front door. And this is kind of, you could also call it like an EDC dump tray or whatever, but this is just a place to put your stuff, um, you know, if you have a standard loadout that you carry every day, a knife, your phone, your wallet, your keys, uh, money, stuff like that, this can hold it all so it doesn't get lost. Like I have recently lost my really nice little minimalist wallet from Pop of Leather, by the way. <laughs> I have no idea where it is, somewhere in this house. Uh, but anyway, um, th these are actually pretty cool things to have. Um, and I don't see this anywhere on the list. So, you know, uh, quite honestly, I I would have thrown this, I would have, this is worth being an item. I would have thrown this on the packing list and called it an item if I were them looking at what's in this box, to tell you the truth. Um, because this is pretty decently made. I don't know if this is real leather or synthetic or whatever, um, but this is pretty nice to have if you don't have one of these. Um, and there you go. So this would, uh, I don't know, depending on what they, they charge price-wise, I mean, this would probably go in the like-it pile because these are good to have. Keep all your stuff organized and in one place, you know. So 
but it's not on the list, so it's not really an item. It's just a nice extra thing. Um, I don't know if this will sway Jason's opinion or not, but I'll put it back in the box now. And we will start by going through all of the items in order, and we are going to start with this very large, kind of a classic old-timer knife. Um, this is... I think this literally is what, what Crocodile Dundee pulls out from behind his back when he says, now that's a knife. I think this is the actual knife. I, I can tell you right now, uh, now Schrade, you know, their older stuff, is, they, Schrade is a classic name. And they make some classic, you know, stuff, but a lot of their stuff isn't made great, we'll say. Um, this has the feel of something that is not great. Um, it is a cool looking piece. This is all plastic. I mean, if you look at this, this, this isn't even two layered stuff. This is just plastic with color. It's paint, basically. Um, now the Smoky Mountain price they put on this is $19.99 according to the packing list. Uh, it's a 10 inch clip point blade. Yeah, that's great. Full tank stainless steel blade. I, I would, I guarantee you this is something terrible. Um, it flexes a little. Um, it, it's, it's not uncomfortable, but this is not, this is not a high quality anything. This is, this is really not. It's full tang. OT saw cut handle. Great. Um, I'm, I'm looking for any kind of steel that it uses and you know the, the fact that they don't list the steel is more telling than anything else that they're not telling you they're specifically not telling you what kind of steel this thing is made of um tells you more about the steel than them putting a you know almost as much about the steel than them actually listing the steel type you know because one of the things i say over and over is when it's when something's made of a good high quality steel they want you to know it and this says nothing at all. This is a novelty piece. Um, it, it just it just is. Uh, I would not if if this was my box and I got this 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 knife would sit in a large plastic tub of other novelty type knives that I have absolutely no use for. The sheath is uh, not bad. It's got wow. I'm glad I looked in there before trying to put the knife in it there's Yeah um, And there's another there's another one in there Maybe I'll use this instead of the knife blade this time. No, oh, it's a plastic bag. Okay um, It's similar it looks similar to the way Ontario does some of their large fixed blade sheaths, but it's it's not as good. There's no hard, rigid plastic in there. So it just kind of goes in. And let's see. Well, that's something. A little bit of a rattle, but it's kind of secure. But this is just, it's, you know, I, 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 there are some people I could, in my, in the world, I could see using this out there as like some kind of fan, as some kind of field knife to impress people. But it's a, it's a relatively thin piece of steel for a blade this big. Um, I, where's a piece of cutting money that we can use? It's finished nice. Um, Got a bit of a hollow grind there on the blade. I mean, yeah, they sharpened it, but I, I doubt it's going to hold that edge for any length of time. Because um, I don't think this is really intended for real rugged use, um, a knife of this size. You know, we just saw such a beautiful large blade in Monthly Knife Club, too. But this has got to go honestly and don't like it. Because I know in my heart... That this is not a good quality piece. This is uh, between the, the the little stamped name there and these chintzy plastic handles. Um, I don't know. 
It just, I, it's got to go and don't like it. It's just, it's just cheap. It really is. So one item and don't like it off the bat. Um, next, we've got another Rough Rider. We got a lot of Rough Riders in this box, and these do have some collection, you know, quality to them. What do we have? We have a Brown Jig Bone Barlow, 440A stainless, but these all do because they're really, yes, you can, you can use them, but these are really collection pieces, and they're nicely done. I gotta say, I, I, I like the Rough Riders as collection pieces. Um, and although 440A is not gonna be a a great you know long lasting blade you could actually take this out with you and, and use it somewhere if you wanted to you're just gonna have to do some maintenance on that blade so we've got our two blades uh, historically speaking the blades on the Rough Riders who knows what you're getting in terms of finishing on it so we've got this one little guy right here which is not bad, but not great either. Um, that's actually, um, it's all slip joint, doesn't have half stops or anything. And then we've got this guy, which is finished much better than the other one. Um, still needs a little bit of work. And again, for a collection piece, it's nice. Um, they say that the MSRP on this is eleven ninety nine. It's funny that look at the the size difference. This one is an MSR or or sorry, Smoky Mountain price, not an MSRP, but this is this one. This giant thing is eight dollars more than this little guy. So you can only imagine the quality, you know, difference. I like the Rough Riders. Rough Riders, you know, have a place to me, and that is, you know, it's something that it, it, you could build a collection that you could pass down. So Rough Rider is going to go in. I like it. I think that the price for what you're getting and what you what you know it is 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 okay. You know. Um, and then you we have one more item in the GI box, and it's a buck. And normally, you know, a buck is going to be a pretty good knife made in the USA. Um, so it is the Rival Three Model Three Sixty Six. 420 HC blade, which is not a 420, like, you know, 420J. Um, 420 HC is a better quality. Not digging the cheap feeling plastic handles, though. I'm telling you that. But uh, deep carry clip right off the bat. So that's pretty cool. Mm, not bad. Comfortable. Made in the USA, so that counts for something. Um, the price on this is $24.99. Nice. Well done. I mean, you know, buck. A lot, most of their stuff, I don't know if I should say most of their stuff. A lot of their stuff is made in the USA. They have some, some pieces that are not. Um, my only complaint is this handle does feel cheap plastic. It, it The handle just... And I'm not saying every plastic handle is cheap. Spyderco, Benchmade, they, they all have, you know, have some plastic handle knives, but this one just feels cheap. But nice blade. It's got a, a nice light stonewash finish to it. Really nice drop point design. Um, ambidextrous thumb studs, so you left-handed people can get in on the action with this one. Lockback, which is, we say all the time, one of the most sturdy folding knife designs, you know. Not going anywhere. Centering is, oh, I'm trying to see in there. That swedge can be a little deceiving, but centering looks just about perfect. A little tiny bit of wiggle, but you can probably, oh no, it's riveted, you can't fix that. A little bit of wiggle, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, shallow hollow grind there, um, which I, I enjoy, I like. Uh, and and you know what, with this lockback, a little accidental push is not gonna close the blade. You really gotta mean it. So, um, 
I'm just, I'm, there's something I'm not feeling about. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me a little bit of a SOG. Maybe of the Aries, I'm not sure. But it's got a good feel to it. It's, you know, it's, it's a little bit slim, but still comfortable in your hand. Um, and, and, and Bucks 420HC is a really good, reliable steel. Um, can't move the clip around at all, so very little soup for you. But I like it. I like I like it. There's there's no jimping, but the way they have this, I mean, it's not really a choil, but it's just this big. It, I mean, it's you get a good grip on it. You do. You can squeeze this handle though. You can feel it squeeze. I don't know. I have kind of a love hate relationship already with this knife, but overall, I like this knife. Good length, good EDC size, good handle for big hands, um, but not too big. You know, I I'm gonna put this one and like it. This is something I, I might be interested in picking up myself. Not bad. Not bad. And I think that a made in the USA buck, $25, fair price. Fair price. So so that's it. That's everything that's in the GI box, though. You know, I, we used to just get a little bit more. That's all I'm saying. We've got one item in the Officer's Club box, and it's a Boker. Not a Boker Plus or a Boker Magnum, but a, a, an honest-to-God Boker. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's got a Smoky Mountain price of $80.50. Made in Germany. It's the Buckskin Stockman. Oh. The Boker has many different product lines, but the actual Made in Germany for real Bokers, these are like the... These are the real ones. These are the ones that, wow, okay. Um, these are the, how can I say it? Uh, I don't know. These are the good ones, the best, the highest end ones. And this looks like uh, Boker's version of a trapper, you know, kind of. See what kind of steel we got? C75 carbon steel. That's, that's pretty nice, actually. So it's smooth buckskin bone on the handles with, of course, brass liners and uh, nickel pins and you know all the actual fine materials nothing cheap on this one um, full slip joint again no half stops you've got the actual boker tree medallion there that lets you know it's the real full-on boker um, oh that's nice tree brand tree brand classic Now, this is definitely something that you can keep and pass down. Mmm. Oh, Boker, you're kidding me. Oddly enough, the Rough Rider has a blade that is finished a little bit finer than the Boker. What is up with that? Um, that is something I never would have expected. Get your little Boker materials. Um... I, I gotta be honest though, like, you know, for $80, I'm expecting this thing out of the package to be razor sharp. I'm expecting it to be as, as finely finished as the $25 buck, if not more so. You know what I mean? Um, it is still a very nice knife, but I gotta put it in mass just for the, the sake of, you know, I shouldn't, for, for an actual boker from Germany, for eighty dollars, I shouldn't have to touch this blade myself. It should be it should be out of the box. It should be ready to slice hairs. Um, this is not a brand that that should require any any touching up at all. So I'm disappointed. Now it could now it could just be this one, could be this one, but we're gonna have to hear from some other folks that get the box what their experience with it was. Okay. So that's the one item in the officers club box. Now we've got one item in the General's box too, and it is a Spyderco Endella K390 Blue. Made in Japan, so not USA, but also at the same time, not China or anything like that. K390 steel. Um, now this, I do like. So it, you know, it's, The Andela is like, like the Endura and the Delica had a baby. And 
it's a it's a great blade shape um great finish on the blade too look at that um i love the weight on it i don't have one of these and i kind of wish i did uh, really like the the color on it once you know just like we said you know i i had just mentioned spider co has plastic handles and get everybody and this is a classic example of the product line 3.4 inch blade looks gorgeous The Smoky Mountain price is one thirty one sixty. I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't. I'm not really that big on the K three ninety steel. I don't know if it, you know, how special it is. That is what a knife should feel like. Wow. Um, this is gorgeous. I'm jealous of this. This absolutely goes, and I like it. You know, it's basically the exact same handle as as the uh, Endura. Um, I mean, oh, stand by one. Okay, I'm back. All right, just to put the whole thing into perspective. So, um, basically, you have the Endura. You have the Endella. I guess the Endella hand... No, it's, it's like the exact same handle, pretty much. And then you have the Delica. And so you see what I mean when I say that the Endella is like the Endura and the Delica had a little baby, and it is... Um, it's almost like a it's almost like a, like a little modified sheep's foot blade going on there, um, and you know the blade size fits neatly between the Endura and the Delica. Um, there's a lot of shininess poking at the camera for you. I really in I really like the size of the Endella though. Um, it's a it's just a really nice size. It's a little bit lighter than the Delica, uh, not uh, of the a little bit lighter than the. Endura. Not as light as the Delica, obviously. Both made in Seki City. It's a nice, it's a nice knife. It's a really nice knife. I would absolutely carry one of these if I had it. I love the blade shape. I love it. I like it a lot better than the Endura, which reminds me of uh, Skeksis. And if you don't know what that is, you have some 80s brushing up to do. Yeah, um, but I like it a lot. I like it a lot. So this absolutely goes in like it. This is a really nice. I, I I've actually never never held one before. Um, this is a really nice addition to the Spider Co. product line. You know, great EDC size too. Really nice EDC size blade. When you compare it, just they took off just enough from the Endura to make it. I think um, a lot more EDC friendly and, uh, you know, a, a lot more EDC kind of like in terms of the size and shape of the blade. It just, the feel is really is night and day. And I really like the feel of this one over the Endura. So pretty cool. Well done. Definitely goes and like it. Now inside the box, you've got a thing that talks about the K390 micro clean it's you know state-of-the-art work tool um all about the composition of k390 and you know I, again i don't i'm not i don't know a lot about k390 i know it's it's one of the the newer you know high performance steels on the market i don't know if it qualifies as a super steel uh exactly um or but it's it, it's pricey it definitely is pricey so um it's a premium steel so it goes in like it so at the end of the box, that's what we got. We do have one, two, three items and like it, one in meh, and one in don't like it. Um, and then don't forget the free valet tray. But we still only have one, two, three, four, five items, and then the free thing. And if you look back, you know, a few months ago, and I know, I know, pandemic, COVID, it made things hard on everybody. But at the same time, it's not like they lowered the price of the subscription and said, listen, COVID made things hard on everybody. You know, we're, we're going to, obviously, if it made things hard on the store, it made things hard on the customer too. They're not giving the customer a break 
for the reduced stock for the reduced items in the box um you know they're they're paying jason's paying the exact same price he was paying when we had eight nine ten items in the box you know um so i get it i get it that it's harder for them to source and do all this stuff in the days of covid but it's hard it's it's just as much harder for jason to earn his money and live his daily life in the days of the virus you know and if anything the customer's money is at a premium now so i i, I gotta say i think that if that is the reasoning and the reason i'm bringing this up is i you know I, that's what everybody says. Oh, well, you have to understand it is COVID and da, 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 da. No, I get that. But then shouldn't the customer get a break if the, if the, if the business has to reduce what they're giving to the customer, shouldn't the business reduce the cost to the customer as well? Um, I don't know. I don't know. So now the, it's really going to be on Jason to, to see this and decide does he want to continue footing the bill for this box? I like unboxing this because I get to see all sorts of cool stuff and put my hands on stuff and then decide, oh, I want to buy this, oh, I want to buy this. Um, I know you guys like seeing it, um, but at the same time, I cannot in any way argue with a guy who doesn't feel like he's getting his money's worth because that's, that's half the ranting I do on this channel is, you know, the stuff that I'm spending my money on Um you know, getting pissed off that I don't feel like I'm getting my money's worth. So if he feels like this is just not a good use of his money anymore, I got to back him 150%, man. You, I mean, that's that's the decision he's got to make. And I respect whatever he decides. Um, absolutely. So uh, I would love to hear input from all of you guys. What do you think? Has, has this granted, you know, and you can factor in, COVID this and that, you know, it's hard for the virus, but you know, we have no, honestly, we have no idea when things are going to get better. We've heard over and over from so many people, this is when things will get better and there's no guarantee. And even, even if they are going to get better in this many months, that doesn't, that doesn't help us right now. So, or maybe it has nothing to do with that. Maybe, you know, as I've always said over and over when people say, why don't you put your own subscription box together? Cause it's hard. I know it's hard. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Um, so maybe it's just hard and they've, it's, it's hard to keep coming up with stuff month after. I don't know. But what do you guys think about number one, this box, what's in this box, the, uh, the items that we have, you know, I want to know your, your thoughts on these specific items, but what do you think on the progress and the, the, the life cycle of this box as we've seen it on the channel since it started to where we're at now. Um, give Jason your advice. Keep the box or dump the box and go to something else. And I'm not telling you what else we've discussed because I don't want that to affect the opinion and the the comments that you would make. Uh, do we keep the box or do we go to something else? It's all about this box. Do you keep the box or do, you, do we go to something else? What do you think, what would you recommend? that he do and understand that he doesn't care what you say he's just, he's gonna make his own decision um this is not a this is not a a group think or this is not a vote uh he's gonna make the decision based on what he thinks about the box i'm just asking like what would you if he were asking you what would you tell him uh what would you think over the last few months of this of this subscription so there we go um if I had to pick one favorite item out of this box, it's absolutely going to be the Spider Co. Definitely going to be the Spider Co. If it was, if there's going to be a runner-up, it'd probably be the Buck, for sure. Really like that blade shape and everything. And although I'm not, still not a fan of the plastic handle, I love the way it feels in my hand. I do. So, okay, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to look forward to your comments. And I've got some other videos to film tonight, so I'm going to remind you that you guys are all absolutely awesome. I appreciate every single one of you, and I will be back again real soon.